Now that the dust has settled on the UK budget, I thought we'd take a deep dive into that UK budget because there are some hidden clues, hidden unravel secrets, and also some very unpractical positions that the government has taken in the budget. So if you're thinking about buying an electric car or you currently own an electric car, you may have seen the budget and thought that it wasn't all good news or that things seem quite fair now. Well, I'm going to be taking a deep dive into some of the hidden stuff that's happened, talk about how some of the stuff the government announced isn't actually at all practical and how it looks going forward for people who are buying electric cars or thinking about getting renewable technology or anything else around that area. I will ensure that drivers are taxed according to how much they drive and not just by the type of car they own. Now, just before the budget, I made a video talking about the pence per mile issue. Now, I'm not going to go into that because that video even though it was a pre-prediction of what was going to happen in the budget, all the details that I said in it were correct, even though people told me it wasn't going to happen. Turns out the Transport Secretary doesn't know what's happening to the budget compared to the Chancellor. At 3p per mile for electric cars and 1.5p for plug-in hybrids. But in that, we also talked about some solutions that I thought were more practical for the government to do for pence per mile to actually police it. Now, some of the suggestions that I've seen that the government may go for is getting people to yearly check in an MOT station. Just let you know, that won't happen. MOT stations are already busy as it is, and who's going to pay that MOT station for you to go that yearly check? That won't add up to that three pence per mile for most people, and the government would lose money on that. So that seems a ridiculous idea. Um, there's some other suggestions which just won't be able to be policed or done properly because people, if they were asked to, for an honesty policy, most people, believe it or not, are not that honest, especially if it has a financial incentive for them to lie at great degrees. So I don't think it's going to happen in the way that the government thinks it's going to happen, possibly the way I've suggested it happen, or maybe a complete reversal of how it's going to happen. Now, let's talk about when it's possibly coming in. Now, there's a consultation between now and March for the government to figure out how they do it. Um, and then you've got to remember 2028 April when it comes in is the last budget before a possible general election later in the year. What governments like to do before a general election is suddenly reverse some budget policy changes they made and give out lots of handouts of money. So it's more than likely that although the government have announced this in the future for April 2028, it's very possible that it doesn't actually go ahead in 2028. And alongside this, I am providing support to boost our British car industry. Increasing the threshold for the expensive car supplement on electric vehicles. Now we saw something that I predicted earlier on in the year in a video which was talking about the change or removal of luxury road tax for electric vehicles. So I suspected that the previous outgoing Conservative government pretty much knew that they weren't going to win the next general election and put in a luxury road tax uh, element for EVs just before they left government to kind of give Labour a poison chalice. And as suspected, they left that problem down to Labour to decide whether they're going to remove it or keep it. Now, for the first term, Labour have essentially kept it, but no one has officially paid the luxury road tax yet. It doesn't officially come in till April next year. So nobody has paid it, even though technically it is a policy at the moment, unless you've bought a uh, used EV that was a, under a year old, you would have already paid it. Now, what Labour have said is that from April 2026, it's going to be moved to a £50,000 threshold for electric vehicles, and any car under £50,000 will not have to pay the luxury road tax from the £40,000 previous bracket. What's unclear, however, is if you buy a used EV today, will it be backdated for you or not? Now, what we do know is anyone who has a car that will currently pay a luxury road tax in April will have it backdated and won't pay it from April. But we are unclear if any car that's sold between now and April will temporarily pay that luxury road tax. And if they do, it would be more advisable just to tax for a six months element rather than the full 12 months element. Drivers of the rising cost of living is the cost of energy prices. It is a failed scheme, and so I am scrapping it, along with taking other legacy costs off bills. Now, if we just previously popped down to something that I just mentioned before about the free P a mile, we have got some good news for EV drivers. You're actually going to see a reduction of way more than 3p a mile off the cost of filling up. And that is because the government are going to be moving away climate levies from electricity 
to reduce the cost of electricity. This will result in a 3.4p reduction per kilowatt reduction off the price of electricity. Now, considering one kilowatt gets you four miles, that is more than 3p a mile off the cost of filling up. So that is some good news if that 3p a mile does go through, which I suspect it doesn't. But if it does, you've just had 3.4p removed. Now, the good news about the 3.4 reduction, it will be off all electricity tariffs. That includes people who are already fixed into a fixed term contract and people who are non-EV tariffs and EV tariffs and people are just running heat pump tariffs. That should be a full reduction off those tariffs. Now, the question is, if you're an Octopus Go Intelligent, which has a super low rate of 7p overnight, by the way, if you want to sign up for that tariff, evnick.com forward slash energy, you can get £50 for signing up to Octopus Energy there as well. Will the 7p rate reduce by any amount at all? I suspect Octopus may be persuaded to maybe knock one pence off that 7p, even though it is already way below wholesale rate. Now, how do Octopus get that 7p rate way below wholesale rate? They use stuff like energy trading, grid trading. It's a very complicated thing. In fact, I was hoping to make a full video. I'm going to try and get some Octopus experts on to interview them, speak to them, uh, talk about how that tariff works. If you want to see that video and you're interested in it, let Octopus know by giving this video a thumbs up, click subscribe and that notification bell, and I will try and get hold of them to make that video. Providing £1.3 billion additional funding for the electric car grant. Now, one final thing we saw in the budget for anyone who's interested in stuff to do with climate or thinking about getting any renewable technology is we saw a change in the heat pump grant. But that seems a whole new video that I will be making separately because there's a lot of information I want to deep dive into that and go into that. So if you want to learn more about heat pumps in the meantime, click this playlist here. And if you want to see more about that video I made pre-budget about the 3 p a mile, click this video right here.